Are you looking at your blood test and wondering why your erythrocyte sedimentation rate is so high? Or maybe you're just wondering what this test actually is looking at and what it actually does. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at specifically what is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and what the test is actually telling us in terms of what's going on in our body. So as I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health. Whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis, these videos are going to help you get a better understanding of what's going on in your body. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, overall optimization, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at what is erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So in this video, we're going to explore what erythrocyte sedimentation rate is, and we're going to look at what it actually means in terms of what's going on in the body to create higher or lower levels. So erythrocyte sedimentation rate, also known as sedimentation rate or ESR or sed rate, is measuring the rate at which red blood cells settle in a vertical tube of blood over a specified period of time, which is an hour. The process that leads to more or less of the stacking of the red blood cells is greatly influenced by inflammation, and in particular, the immune system and its responses to whatever's going on in the body. At the cellular and microscopic level, the immune response causes all kinds of different things to happen in the body. On the level of the red blood cells, it causes them to stick or stack together, and that leads to a higher ESR or sedimentation rate. How does the immune response actually do this? Well, it has to do with the things that are produced by the immune system when this is occurring. The immune system, of course, is responsible for inflammation and responding to whatever's going on, infections and injuries and things like that. And if the signals it produces cause the liver to produce something known as acute phase proteins, including things like globulins and fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a fairly large protein, and it's normally present in blood at very low levels. During inflammation, though, the concentration of fibrinogen significantly increases, as do these other acute phase proteins. The increased concentration of the fibrinogen and the other acute phase proteins or other proteins will alter the surface properties of the red blood cells and the charges on those red blood cells. This process makes the surface of the red blood cells much more sticky. The stickiness caused by the increased concentration of these proteins and fibrinogen cause them to adhere, stick together, causing a stacking effect of those red blood cells. And it almost looks microscopically like a stack of coins. This aggregation of the red blood cells occurs more readily in the presence of these acute phase proteins. Outside of fibrinogen, there are other examples of these proteins and includes things like serum amyloid A, fibronectin, heptoglobulin, alpha-1 antitrypsin, alpha-2 macroglobulin, seriloplasmin, and ferritin. The main one affecting the clumping or stacking of those red blood cells, though, is fibrinogen. This is a protein that increases when there's tissue damage, and it leads to increased fibrin levels, and the fibrin is needed to basically make like a scaffolding so that a clot can more easily form. So how does this sedimentation rate test perform? Well, blood sample is taken from your arm, then it's put into a vertical tube, and it's measured over a period of an hour. Any red blood cells that are stacked or clumped together are going to settle more quickly because they're heavier than the freely moving individual cells. As the red blood cells settle, they form a visible column over time. That column is then measured in millimeters per hour, and so the faster they settle, the higher the millimeters or column is, and the higher your ESR level is. So this erythrocyte sedimentation rate test or ESR test is a nonspecific marker of inflammation because it doesn't really directly measure 
a cause of inflammation, like do you have a bacterial infection or a fungal infection or some other problem going on, but rather it reflects the presence of those proteins that we described in the corresponding changes in the properties of the red blood cells that are associated with inflammation. And so it's mainly looking at is there an increased production of these globulins and fibrin in your body? And that can be very helpful and important to know because those are the things that the immune system produces when it is fighting something off. Just remember that an elevated ESR isn't really telling you a definitive diagnosis. It is telling you that your immune system is more active than it should be and it's probably producing more fibrinogen and more of these other proteins. So typically you'll have to do other testing to narrow down what's going on. So what should your erythrocyte sedimentation rate be and what is the optimal reference range for the ESR? That's what we're going to discuss now. Okay, so how'd I do? Did that give you a better understanding of what the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is? Hopefully it does. If you do have questions about this, drop it in the comment section. Happy to answer your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.